Hello, and welcome back to Cemetery Mary. On the last episode, we met Mary and got some information about what's going on, really. Uh, there seems to be a killer on the loose in the town of Blackwood, named the Blackwood Butcher. And although we have never met them on screen, our parents have decided that we should live with our aunt and uncle and cousin. Unfortunately, however, we also not have met our aunt, uh, aunt and uncle. We believe something has happened to them. Because our cousin, Croven, who we've met, is not in the best moods. And we th uh, think that's why. Uh, but other than that, we've only met two of the people who well, met. One is Reginald, someone uh, who was previously at a funeral and we met again at the library. And some mysterious number on a phone. Other than that, we don't really know much. But uh, our parents are missing and they seem to know what's going on. I got changed into pyjamas, brushed my teeth and sat in my bed and texted whoever they are. Hi, it's me again. Are you there? Yes. You're still not going to tell me anything, are you? No. Can I ask something? Even if you won't give me an honest answer anyways. Okay. Are you the Blackwood Butcher? Would I tell you if I was? Are you afraid of for their safety? Of course. Why wouldn't I be? I see. Should I be afraid... Uh, should I be afraid for my own safety? Why do you have them? Um, should I be afraid? Who am I to tell you what you should and shouldn't be afraid of? Your fears are your own to judge. You're, all, you're way too vague. Why'd you even contact me to begin with? I thought you'd like to know about your parents. I'm only trying my best to keep you happy. Uh, you think I'm happy? Maybe not now, but you will be. I have to go now. Goodbye. Goodbye. After another frustrating and unsettling night of text messages, I got under the covers and tried my best to sleep. It wasn't easy, and I had a lot of difficulty trying. I don't remember exactly w when, but eventually I was able to sleep, even if not peacefully. Dad? Yes, sweetheart. Um, yes? Is something wrong? Mama told me that Uncle Ray died. Did she know? Are we going to see him? No, no. You don't need to worry about that. I don't, but... Listen, Mary. Normally when someone passes... You hold a funeral for them, right? Yeah. Then, about funerals, though. The thing about funerals, though, is that they're for the people who are worth remembering. Okay, then. So, apparently, Uncle Ray, who might be the person, uh, who might be Croven's parent, it could be a, another, a different uncle, but, um, as far as we're aware, it's the only one we have, but Uncle Ray is not someone to remember. After I got out of bed, I made myself a small breakfast and got changed into my favourite outfit. Croven's gone, and the bus I take it out into town should be arriving any minute now. Where should I go today? Uh, the cafe is the only one we haven't gone to yet. I decided to go to the new cafe that opened up. Planet Dollars is popular. It is a popular cafe, uh, coffee chain, but we've never had one in this town. Well, until now, that is. I've always wanted to go to one, just to try it, you know. Although I don't actually like coffee, but still, I could at least see what they had, right? When I got uh, to the cafe, it was already packed. I thought I, I thought since it had already been around a few weeks, some of the hype surrounding it would have died down. But I guess not, seeing how noisy and crowded it was. Still, at least it was something different from usual. As I said, I'm not particularly fond of coffee. And since I had a light breakfast anyways, I decided to treat myself with a muffin. A chocolate muffin. Good choice. Good choice, Mary. 
because sweet foods are the best. However, I found myself in a bit of a pinch when I tried to look for some place to sit down. It seemed as though everyone's seats were already taken, uh, and I didn't really want to walk and eat at the same time. Luckily though, I was able to find an empty seat. A girl around my age was, uh, with the most peculiar eyebrows was uh, diligently working on her laptop with an empty seat across from her. Yeah, those definitely are some kind of eyebrows. I figured she must be writing an essay for college or something. Coffee shops are, are popular with people in college, or so I hear. Seeing as this is the only seat left, I asked her, Excuse me, may I sit here? She didn't verbally answer me. Rather, she glanced over at me, rolled her eyes, and nodded to the empty chair. So I tried to look apologetic, apologetic as I sat. Thank you. Uh, I mean, we want to socialize, I guess, but she doesn't want to, so I'm going to stay quiet. Stay quiet. Stay quiet. Hey. Thanks for being quiet while I work. Yay! You're welcome. I know I... I could read the room. This noisy, quote-unquote, uh, full room. Uh, yeah. You obviously didn't want to socialize. I appreciate it. Oh, of course. No problem. Uh, what are you working on, if I may ask? Uh, so you're interested in what I'm doing here? Well, yeah, I guess. You seem to be very focused, after all. As focused as I can be. What's your name? Me? I'm Mary. Twyla. Nice to meet you. Anyways, I'm working on a report. A report? Like for school? No. Have you noticed something odd going on in town recently? The Blackwood Butcher? Something odd? I'm not surprised if you haven't heard of it, about it. It's like the police are trying uh, to dull suspicions. Or just arrest potential suspects so everyone can feel safe. Oh, are you talking about the killing rumor? The Blackwood Butcher, right? Don't say it so loud. Why, are you suspicious? Uh, or... No, that's not what I'm thinking, thinking of. Um, super, superstitious, there we go. But, yes, how did you know? Oh, well, uh, I've been hearing the rumors for a while now. And actually, my own uncle uh, died pretty recently. That's unfortunate to hear. They were, um, killed. Really? Uh-huh. That's actually pretty... How did they die? Oh, I didn't... I don't know. No one really told me, but... The circumstances were strange. Like, they didn't die naturally. There were definitely someone... Uh, there was definitely someone else involved. At least, that's what I've been told. Uh-huh, interesting. You know, maybe you can help me with this report. And, uh, some other stuff. Oh, I can? Yeah. If you're okay with that, of course. Oh, uh, yeah, I, sure, I guess. I mean, having a killer around is bad. So, if I can help... Uh, like raise awareness or something. I mean like, yes, I'd like to help you. Thanks. This will really put me ahead. I have to go actually. I'm running late for something. Yeah, give me your phone number. I'm not entirely sure I'll uh, need your help, but I'd rather have a way to contact you just in case. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Well, just like Reginald, I guess. Um, immediately handing out my phone number to the people we just met. Twyla and I exchanged phone numbers after she packed up her laptop and was picked up by a car outside. Come to think of it, I didn't actually see her drink any coffee or order any food. I guess maybe she finished it before she uh, got here. Or she just didn't. She just needed the space, maybe. I don't know why she would uh, choose just a naughty place to work, though. After all, uh, after spending my day looking uh, into some nearby stores... I went home pretty tired. I ate leftovers for, for dinner and yawned more than once as I got changed into my pajamas. I plopped onto my bed and pulled out my phone, ready to continue the nightly conversation. You there, right? Of course I am. I don't know why I keep contacting you. I guess I'm just afraid if I don't, you'll disappear or something. It's unlikely. I know you won't tell me where my parents are, but can you at least tell me why you took them? No. Why not? I don't know who else could see these messages. 
Are you worried about being traced? Possibly. I may even change phones from time to time just to be careful, but you'll know it's me. I don't know if that should be comforting or not. I really don't see how this works. How am I supposed to trust you on someone dangerous if you don't even give me info to go off of? Especially when I haven't even heard from my parents. Goodbye, Mary. Speak well. I mean, how do we know this isn't our parents specifically? I felt sick that night as I tried to sleep. I tossed and I turned so many times, and yet I was still too tired to get up and try, do so, try doing something else. I don't remember when, but eventually I was able to fall asleep. I didn't sleep very well, though. I'm not going back out there. You? You saw how they, they were looking at me. I can't do it. I can't. I'm sorry. I just... Maybe it's better if I don't go anymore. Are we the Blackwood Butcher? I don't think it was, but I think it's just us remembering our family. I woke up late the next morning. I must have been pretty tired after the last few days. I dragged myself out of bed and followed my normal morning routine. Got to change into my favourite outfit, had breakfast, etc. And of course, Corvin was once again nowhere to be seen. However, when I checked my phone that morning, I realised I he had sent me a message. To my surprise, there were other messages there as well from my new friends. Who should I read first? Uh, Croven, Reginald, Twilight. Okay, so is this what they're all supposed to be? Like, animal-wise? Because a crow, Croven, Twi Twilight, does look like a, a bird. Uh, unknown number, which you can't click. And Reginald. Is Reginald a puffer fish? Okay, well, family first, I guess, Croven. Hey, Mary, I'm sorry. I know I've been acting pretty nasty to you lately. I hope you, you know I don't mean it. Have you been to Planet Dolls yet? I'll be heading there for lunch today. Maybe at, like, 12.30? You should come and have lunch with me, my treat. And then I can, like, formally apologise or whatever. At least he's trying to be polite. Okay, so Reginald got there first. At 9 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Just about a bit after 10. Get Reginald. Good morning, Miss Mary Anata. Or Anta. Mary Anta. Uh, I hope you're doing well today. You would ask me about the book uh, the other day, right? Well, I actually finished it quicker than I expected to. I really love to, to give it to you, but I won't uh, be at the library today. I'm actually going to the cemetery. You like that place, right? You should uh, come see me. Uh, I get well. Uh, then I can uh, pass the book over to you. I'll be there at court, uh, after noon or so. Then uh, maybe a uh, then maybe after we can grab lunch uh, or something together. I hope it doesn't come off as weird. I I just like uh, some company uh, for my lunch break. What do you work? Where do you work if you if it's a lunch break? Call me back, Mary. Well, and what's Twyla saying? Mary, it's Twyla. If you're still interested in helping me, I'd be at the library around noon today. It should be quieter there. And there's some books I want to pick up uh, for research purposes. Maybe there, if you can. But if it's not, I'll just call you up at another time. Okay, exit the phone. I was messaged by each of them. However, I think I only have time to meet up with one of them today. Uh, where should I go then? Well, considering it uh, about um, family matters and emotion, I feel like Croven's the most important. Everyone else is just casually like, hello, let's meet up. It was a tough choice, but I had to choose one of them. I told the others I had plans and that I'd, I'd meet with them at some other time. Then when, then when noon rolled around, I headed to my, to my destination. I spotted Croven pretty quick. Dressed in the way we do, it wasn't very hard. I'd recognize these red and black stripes, uh, striped sleeves from a while away. When Croven saw me, he gave me a hug. And it made me realize how long it had been since he last hugged me. His arms felt relaxed, and he was wearing his classic smile. For a moment, it looked as if he was back to normal, uh, his normal old self. 
We had lunch together, and he had promised, and Leggy promised it was his treat. Okay, then. that just immediately went by. Uh, and then they said, "Oh, Croven, please don't, uh, please don't dab." Uh, so you definitely dabbed. Of course I did. You know I had to uh, do it to him. I'll bring it all out now, eh? Uh, that's so you. Uh, I know, right? I thought about mentioning how happy I was uh, that he was starting to feel all right, but I was worried by bringing it up, he might get upset again. So I kept, just kept the conversation going. I think that's a smart thing to do, personally. Uh, there was no reason to bring it up anyways. So, would you consider it a successful date? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, uh, they looked really ready to kill me by the end of it, but in uh, the fun way, you know? Uh, I kind of like how uh, Mom looks at Dad when he ma makes a bad pun. So that's... Isn't that technically bringing it up because he's thinking about parents? Exactly. Uh, I'm happy for you. Uh, uh, do you think you'll uh, t t t t take them out again? Maybe. Wow. Going on a date sounds fun. Oh, don't worry, Mars. Someone will take uh, you out too one day. So anyways, do you like it here? The planet dolls, I mean. I always thought it was overhyped, but now that we have one, it actually ain't so shabby. Oh, actually, I've been here before. Oh, you have? When? Oh, I was just here the other day because I wanted to check it out. Funnily enough, we sat at this table too. Oh, you did? Wait. Who's we? Did you suddenly make friends behind my back? Uh, uh huh? Oh. When I was here, this place was packed, so the only empty seat was uh, at this table. But some other girl was sitting here too, so I guess we're, like, kind of friends now. I mean, I just met her, but we're keeping in contact, so... But... Well, you seem to know who Twyla is, Croven. Yeah. Is that a problem with that? Mary, listen to me. I'm saying this because I care about you. Stay away from Twyla. Uh, Twyla, is this who you're dating? Eh? Why? You just can't talk to her, okay? I can't... Of all people, you had to talk to her. She's the kind of girl who stabbed the devil in the behind with his own pitchfork. I mean, that's the, that's definitely who you want as your friend. Seriously, you shouldn't be, be talking to her. Do you know her? Did something happen between you two? You've never mentioned it before, and... Mary, please. I know I'm coming off really bad right now. And you probably think I'm uh, being rude. No. I, I can tell you're being protective, don't worry about it. But I am going to ignore your advice. But just don't talk to her. You just can't. If she's bad, if she's that bad, I'll watch her back. My back. I will promise that I'll help her with some stuff. But I trust you, uh, your reasons for disliking her. Even if I don't know what they are. I think it's a little late to, uh, to back out of an agreement, but I'll definitely t take what you said to heart. I'll be careful. Good, you should be. Yeah, I, I, I trust them both. If she's definitely the type who would fight Satan, why not? Come on, let's uh, throw, out our, throw, throw our trash out. Groven was still a salty over Twyla, even after I attempted to, uh, to drop the conversation. He said he w uh, wouldn't talk about it anymore, but I better not mention him to Twyla, ever. We tried to spend the rest of the day together. But it was more that uh, more than apparent he wasn't in a good mood anymore. At least by the time we started heading home, he'd calmed down uh, to a much more normal state. After getting home, he said he was going to, to smoke outside uh, for a little bit, so I let him and headed up to bed. And did what I do every night. Hi. Hello. Can we talk about uh, can we talk about that thing you said the other night? I haven't been able to stop thinking about it ever since you said it. What's bothering you? You said that you were coming for me. That you just needed more time. Are you really going to steal me too? It'll be alright, I promise. It's for the best. You're going to make me feel uh, sick all over again. What do you want me to tell you? Uh, that I... well... Who you really are. Is that really want you what you want? You'll see me soon. But you shouldn't worry about it. It will happen when it happens. This is for the best. 
even if you can't see that right now, even if you can't ever, when will it be, this be over? Soon, hopefully. I just need more time. You'll hang on for me, won't you? Do I have a choice? Haha, <laughs> sweet dreams, Mary. I didn't sleep after all, uh, at all that night. I really didn't. There were a few times I shut my eyes and tried to, but nothing came that could calm me down anymore at this point. My anxiety was through the roof. I just wanted mom and dad back. I wanted to know for certain that they were okay. It should have been me that was taken. Maybe it was supposed to be. The next morning, when I got up, Crowan was still home. He seemed to be acting pretty normal for once. At the very least, not agitated. But despite this, I didn't sit and have breakfast with him. I wasn't in the mood to really talk to anyone, right not right now. Not after last night. It was too much. I just wanted some private time to myself. I wanted it to cool down. As I was about to leave, a crow called out to me. Not eating, bre not eating breakfast, Mars? What's it with the both of you shortening names? I responded. Not today, I'm not hungry. I'm meeting with a friend for breakfast. Uh, I'm just going to pick something out. Uh, something up. I'll pick up something when I'm out. Yeah, why not? You responded with a simple okay. And after that, I was out of the door. I just wanted to go to that place and not be bothered. On the bus ride there, all three of them texted me again. Corbin said he noticed I left pretty quickly and I hoped I wasn't upset with him for his behaviour lately. Twyla talk, uh, talked about some of her progress on her research and Reginald said he would be at the cemetery again. Although I appreciated their messages, I just really it needed to be alone. I needed to go back there and just relax. No, it's not the right word. I was going there to relax. I was going there to mourn. The Dine Red, it's where I grew up. I lived my whole life in this diner. Restaurant? Bistro? Uh, I never know what the right word for this place is. We always had such a silly names for it since it was the next to the cemetery. The restaurant in peace. Uh, sometimes the diner. Even just simply dine dead. Uh, I'm assuming it, it based on what you said during Tukrovan's conversation. It was your father who made all these puns. I always wondered it, if others caught on. You probably wouldn't know just from looking at it. But there's two floors. Well, we can only see one, sir. The bottom floor is the diner itself. I've eaten there for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sometimes all in the same day. The top floor is more like a house. Our house. There's bedrooms and a bathroom, and even a small living space with a TV. It can be a little cramped sometimes, but it's cosy. No one could get up there but me and my parents, of course. The upstairs is locked, and you need a key. Which I have, of course. After mom and dad went missing, the authorities locked this place up. And it's been locked up ever since. They don't want anyone going in there, not even me. Because I don't know. It's kind of like a crime scene or something. But I still have the key to the front too. It's my house after all. I carefully scanned the area around me and I, as I stood in the parking lot. There was a few cars that passed by. And maybe a person or two on the sidewalk. But no one it really seemed to pay any did me any mind. It was still a little bit early in the morning, so it wasn't surprising to see a few people out. I looked over my shoulders a few more times to make sure no one was watching me. Then, I stepped up to the front door and unlocked it, it took, uh, and took a step inside, closing it behind me carefully. When I stepped inside, I, instantly hit with a, I was hit, instantly hit with a wave of all different kinds of emotions. I had been avoiding the diner for so long, because whenever I passed it, I would just think of mom and dad and feel sad. But now stepping inside, it felt nice. At least a little bit. Just being able to be in my own house after so long. It was bittersweet. On one hand, I felt so happy to just be home. Everything was just as I'd left it. The light still entered in through the windows the same way it always did. It still smelled faintly of, of delicious food, even though the kitchen hadn't been used in a while. 
even Bomb Special Board was in the same spot, but it felt so empty, so desolate, so abandoned. There wasn't even uh, any electricity here. This place was hardly ever empty. Uh, we had always had customers, and the diner always did well. There was hardly a moment where I'd come downstairs and only see mom and dad. There was also there was always people, even if it was just one person here. The kind of was be would be full of coffee drinkers at night in the, and in the mornings. I'd see families come by the diner, or people out on dates come here. I always loved being able to see that. There were so many good memories in this place, like my 13th birthday, a married couple that came in, the time we had a Halloween party. I'm curious about a Halloween party. It was more like a a trunk or treat thing, kind of. We had a bunch of cars lined up in a parking lot giving out candy. There were a few games to play. I remember mom helping me put together a little Grim Reaper a costume. I mean, makes sense. Cemetery Mary. It was a rare instance where I actually got along with other kids. And even was able to see them, considering I was homeschooled. I remember Croven being there too. He was dressed like a zombie, though his makeup was com it got c completely ruined when he tried to go bobbing for apples. Uh, bobbing for apples. That's so gross. Who even came up with that? That is a good question. Someone thought, there's apples in th this water, you can only take it out with your face. I don't think I could even imagine doing it today, but it seemed so fun as a kid, even though I never did so. I probably thought it was gross back then too, I guess. I remember Croven getting some uh, getting to sleep over afterwards too. And mom and dad kept the Halloween decorations up all day the next day. It was funny. I used the, uh, some of those decorations in my room now. But I remember all the uh, booths and tables and windows being absolutely covered in orange and black streamers. But now it was all covered in dust, and no one's here. Where should I go? may as well check out their room. I decided to walk up to my parents' room. I just missed them so much. I couldn't bring myself to not to. I stepped into my parents' room. The curtains were drawn. Um, and... Oh, okay. I'm sorry. The... the the stingray at the back just kind of made me click on to the animal theme, obviously, of Mary, because Crowbird's obviously got a crow, Twyla's got an owl looking thing. Uh, her last name is Mary Anta, which is uh, what her full name is, which is M Anta, and obviously there's Ray, so there's Manta Ray. Uh, the curtains were drawn, uh, drawn open, and the warm light flooded into the room as the sun finally came out from behind the, clown, uh, the clouds today. I could still smell some of uh, Mom's perfume lingering in the air, even though it was so neat, just as they had always kept it. You wouldn't have guessed they were kidnapped. There was no sign of a struggle, or even any sort of mess at all. The bed was made, and all their stuff was exactly where it should be. The only difference was the fine layer of dust from how long it had been. And the fact that my parents weren't there, they're here. I sat in my parents' bed. I'm not gonna lie, it just looked like... The way she was sitting, it just looked like she was... Her legs were bending the wrong way. Uh, I'd always sat there. It was always, always softer than mine. I remember sleeping here as a little girl. When I didn't feel quite big enough to sleep in my own bed just yet. Mom would help me uh, build a pillow fort uh, here sometimes, and we would hang up a sign that said, No boys allowed. Aha. Uh -huh. Didn't take long for me to start crying. I miss my mom and dad. I never uh, got the chance to say goodbye to them. The last message I got from them, it was my mom telling me if she hoped I would sleep well that night. And then the next day, they were gone. Just like that. What do I do now? What if they never come back? What if I already saw them for the last time. I end up falling asleep on my parents' bed. 
I was already exhausted from my lack of sleep and crying certainly didn't help that in, in that respect. When I woke up, I was unaware of how much time had passed, but I felt groggy and I didn't think I should stay any longer. It probably uh, just make me feel worse. I got up from the bed and began to head back downstairs. It wasn't until I got to the bottom floor, uh, at the bottom of the stairs that I noticed. Someone was there. Some stranger, kneeling over the front of the uh, doorway. Uh, or for whatever reason. I was almost frozen in, in my spot. Who were they? Why were they here? No one should have been able to get in. This place... Oh, again. This place was locked up and no one should have. That's right. I unlocked it. Crap. I stood there, hoping they wouldn't see me. Though the way they dressed, with baggy dark clothes and their hood up, uh, and their hood up, told me that they were most likely bad news. Did they follow me here? I wasn't sure what to do. I thought about trying to escape uh, out the back way, or sneakily heading back upstairs if need be, but as soon as I took a step back, I tripped slightly and let out a small yelp as I caught myself on a, one of the bar stools. Stranger immediately bolted outside. Wait, I wasn't able, uh, even able to get a good look at them. For a split second, I considered trying to chase after them. And even if, I, if, if it wasn't a stupid idea, they ran much faster than I could to keep up with anyways. Panicked and slightly shaking, I took out my phone. I was so nervous, I, I pressed in my ear without even uh, having dialed anyone yet. I think with that, we'll have to call it there. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed, and hope, uh, because I know I have. And hopefully I'll see you on the next one. With that, goodbye.